Kilkenny is one of the oldest people in our community. He is over 90 years of age. He lives near me in Ballyture, Kiltomer. He has some funny memories. I'm Michael Kilkenny. I'm a farmer's son, as usual. I live in a country area, rural area. We went cut turf all our lives in a bog called Discarbay. Our main supply of peas, they call it turf burning. That's the peas we had. About 30 or 40, 30 good loads of greens uh, at all. That would supply us for the year. It was brought home. They had a regiment on the ha haggard. Very tidy, as much as the uh, stone mason is laying blocks now. We lay every side of it up along about eight feet high to the top, slope it in at the top. We gather buckets of turf down then and call the top of it. There was that way for the winter. We would be very thankful and tired and proud of ourselves we'd have the supply of turf in. But I, I was thinking today myself, all the credit was given to the the boss of the house and the farmer himself. Well, the farmer's wife now did as much in the cut of the turf as the boss of the house did. That's my father. I remember him telling me, sure now and have the box packed with one to the bog on such a day. There were seasons we had to go one week to the bog, about five days of the week we had to go that day. We'll be going such a day, have the bag packed, and don't forget anything the same as you did last year. Be sure and put in a good supply of duck eggs. Hen eggs isn't as good as the duck eggs for sustaining a hard working man in the park. The, and a little saucepan to buy them. So that was grand, that was grand. Dinner time was always at one o'clock. So if there were two men or three men, they gathered in the one bank for the top one, the handiest man of them would be sitting down to put down the fire. He gathered tea around the turf, little bits of timber on the bank. But there were no fire lighters that time. Look at paper, put a match to it, and you had a fire going and leave the kit on the top of it. Then the eggs that we put into a little saucepan. Probably some of be the day two eggs and more one. But this day anyway, this particular day, one egg was put down for them. So when the, there was one man ordained abroad always to keep an eye on the kitten, and we had to turn over and quench the whole lot. And to know when the eggs were boiled. It's a very cute thing to know when to be an egg is by a rise. But the boss man was inside, couldn't turf, couldn't the turf, working hard, and he shouted out, What way is eggs doing? Sure, they should be nearly done now. But they're by them fairly well. A soft duck egg is no good to anybody. So he, when he thought it were boiled, he rose them up. And the men came out and sat round, and one remarked, there's a one egg, one duck egg with a lot bigger than the rest. A good egg bigger, an outsized egg. So the slave man was the most hard to work man, and uh, said to give that egg to the slave man. The other two men topped their eggs, they were perfect. So the slaves man then topped his own egg, and hold, glory and behold, what do you think? Out pops a young duckling, out the bog, ran away, up, swore down to me, what the hell, so and so, jumped out of the egg, he's gone off the bog, whatever it is, funny, funny, we see what is it? So you, you lad ran out, we couldn't find him. From that day to this, no one ever knew how the duckling got into the egg. He came home in the evening, made an awful complaint to the missus. 
what sort of an egg will you send up to the bog? Two eggs with pepper, the one I got a young duck thing. Career out of it, down the bank. She smiled. She knew well what happened. She knew well, but she wouldn't divulge the secret. That was all right. To patch off with that. But very all the talk in the bog was over. How did the duck they get into the egg? egg? They didn't know. They didn't know. Even to sent to the science laboratory in Dublin to find an answer. The only answer they got back was, was there a drake with the ducks? So they put two or two together at home, and this woman had ten ducks and a drake. But what had the drake to do but to put the egg, duckling into the egg? The ten ducks that should be into it, there was always a little duck house in the fire at that time, everyone had them. The tin ducks was put in around the grave, around the tray, and the wall was bedded together and the door shut for the night. And whatever did happen, it happened inside of closed doors. It was never known yet, but I have my doubts, but I'm not sure. A drake is a male duck. And he's the master of ceremony, a very broad, respectable looking animal. So all the blame was left on him. So I don't know this question is being asked all the time. How did the duckling get into the egg? But there's an answer if anyone could find it out. But I have my doubts. I have the answer for I want to mention for another while now. Thank you. But there was one particular animal he didn't mention it to the to the wife. They had a sow. Now a sow is a female pig for breeding purposes. And this particular sow was heavily immune. She would have her bonus any time. But he said, maybe you give a look at the sow during the day. And sure the poor women did. Anyone that kept sows outdoor, outdoor grazing, and then when they get sick to have a litter, they have a funny way of making their bed. They make their bed. They go around about, they gather mouthfuls of straw, mouthfuls of everything, and make their bed in the house. This particular sow, the missus of the house looked at her, what did she see passing the window? But the sow gone with a most mighty mouth with a straw out of the haggard. She watched her and she went into her, to her pig's dying. Oh, God almighty, she says, she's going to have litter, she's going to have litter. And there's no way of telling the boss man, no phone here, and no, no, I don't know when we'll have a phone. But she trusted in God. She was a holy woman. She trusted in God. Let her, let her do whatever she likes. The sow spent two hours drawn straw down from the haggard in her mouth. Looms of it. And when the bus man came home from the bog, she told him, I think the sow is going to have bonus. What? I think she means. Why was him? She had needed the hack of the straw gone in to the house. He pushed out and he had to open the door and find her a in the middle of the straw with tin bonds. Thanks be to God, he says, but you were a mighty woman to mind her. I didn't mind her, she said, I'm afraid of it life to go out. During that time as well, he got the AI you know, you, everyone knows that, yeah, you know, but that time it was a very scarce commodity. So however, the farmer got in touch with the AOE. He told him to attend such a cow in the morning. The morning they were gone to the barn. This gentleman
the men arrived with his collar and tie on him. Locked to the door and the missus opened the door. He, uh, he recognised himself. He says, I'm the AI man. The what? Uh, yeah, I am. I am. I didn't. I never heard of it at all. I don't know what you want to do. Well, I'm going out now to the cow. Where's the cow? Out here in the shed. Well, there's one thing now he says, or she says, I was told there's a nail hanging at the back of the door and you should need it to hang up the trowel if you can.